Bill Swift here. We are with Matt Steffler, head of R&D at the factory. We're going to show you some really cool stuff here. And we're going to talk about how we build all of our small parts. And Matt, let's start with this. This looks like a pretty simple part. This is a float tank for a canoe. So we make a set of these. And Matt, you just told me this weighs 120 grams. So do you want to talk about how you engineer the laminate for it and how we put this into production? Yeah, so uh, typically after we've uh, made a prototype of the float tank and we have a production mold ready, now we can start testing laminates and strength. So uh, we have a typical laminate we like to start with. We'll use that first, and then we can start putting the parts on the force gauge, checking it for distortion and strength and see if we need to add any layers or take away layers. Uh, we find here shape is very important. So uh, a part that has more shape generally can be laid up thinner as it has more strength. Flatter parts tend to be a little weaker, so sometimes we need to put a little extra material in them. Uh, we find here at Swift over the years, we try and find that fine balance point of durability and lightweight. So, you know, we don't want anything to be too overkill and then your boat's too heavy, but we also don't want it to be too lightweight and then your boat's falling apart. So we try and find that perfect median in between. Now, when we do make them, we make them with that really cool resin infusion process. The That's same right. as all of our hulls are made. Yep, everything's made through uh, vacuum assisted resin transfer molding here. It's, uh, it's one of the best ways to make a perfect and lightweight part in our industry without getting into some more complicated processes. Now this is a set of side pod molds to go against the, the canoe that the seats get mounted on. And Matt, I know from talking to you that they've got a high depth of draw on them. Yep. So this particular part, it's, you really had to work on it to develop the resin infusion process. And here you actually have some extra Kevlar backing in it. Do you wanna talk about those things? Yeah, for sure. So like we were saying earlier, you know, uh, over time even, sometimes uh, we, we see imperfections in our boats that we wanna fix. So over time we realized uh, carbon fiber tends to be a little more brittle than per se Kevlar. So uh, over time we noticed a few boats where our inserts were popping out. So to solve that problem, we've infused Kevlar patches in the areas where all our fasteners go because that prevents the fasteners from loosening and coming out of the parts. So you can see how over time we re-engineer things to make them better for our boats. Now, what about the depth of draw? So it took you guys a while, I know, to develop the, just the materials to use for the infusion process for these. Yep, so like, like we said, we actually have a saying in small parts. We like to say that um, everything's the same. They're just different shapes. It's, uh, which isn't always true though. Like Bill said, because this is such a deep part, it can be hard to get resin flow down in there. So uh, yeah, we worked through uh, many different trial and error, different laminates, different layups and uh, different orientations of flow media and spiral tubing until we get the, uh, the product in, that we're looking for. Now here's a finish end cap. Again, super light. I feel like this may float away on us, Matt. <laughs> this is also not an easy part to infuse because it's got the reverse curves on it. And you got to come around the corners and so on. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? I'd love to actually. Uh, the decks actually, uh, although they look very simple, they're actually more complicated than they look. And uh, to, to be honest, my hands are actually almost too big to make these sometimes. We're very lucky that we have some very talented ladies that uh, make these decks because uh, their hands can fit inside of the mold cavities much better than my can. So uh, yeah, the, the decks are great. And you can imagine in the summertime, we're building 12 canoes a day. That's uh, you know two deck mold, two decks for every canoe. That's over 24 of these carbon decks that need to be made every single day. There are, how many people work in the small parts department, Matt? So uh, tip, tip, peak. Typically seven or eight is usually our small parts department. Uh, like I said, you know, for, for every boat that gets made, we need seats, we need decks, we need yokes, we need float tanks. So uh, it, it's a whole crew of effort to uh, get all these parts and get our boats assembled every day. 
Now, one of the things people absolutely love about Swift Canoes is the seating system, so cool. With the curves that it has on it, with the angle to the front bar that allows you to kneel in comfort. We've widened it out in the back for our ample posteriors of today. This part, Matt and Terry took and tooled it up to build in carbon. And this is one of the things that I'm most proud of you guys for. So Matt, why don't you tell the folks just about the process of building these and how this is so cool. Yeah, so actually, uh, this is actually probably one of me and Terry's favorite parts that we made because uh, we had an idea. Um, we didn't know whether it was gonna work or not, but uh, we felt like it was. So we just, uh, we went ahead and just made the mold and then one of those, uh, we'll figure it out later sort of deals. And uh, we did figure it out. It's actually amazing. We're very proud of these parts. They're extremely strong. They're extremely light. Um, we love that we can make a boat for you guys that uh, has pure composite components in it, making maintenance almost minimal for your canoe through its life. And uh, a big part of why we're so proud of these is, um, we'll just pop this one out of the mold here. There we go. So this is the raw frame that would come out of the mold like this. And then uh, we would inspect for any imperfections or any structural issues. And then from there, we'd clean it all up and uh, we'll strap her up. But uh, like I was saying, one of the biggest things that we're extremely proud of in here is every carbon seat actually has a carbon fiber I-beam running uh, parallel through the seat to uh, guarantee the strength of the seat through its life. Nice. Now, I've, you guys have come up with some very creative ways to strength test those that I've yeah. seen over the years. So you test all the small parts for strength. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, the best way to uh, learn sometimes is to break things and uh, just find out their failure points, right? So uh, if you can figure out where something's failure point is, then you can change where that failure point is, right? So we can adjust the laminate to any weak points. In, even in some cases, sometimes we find a, a part can be too strong and then we actually pull material out just to get that, that balance. Obviously, we don't need a seat that holds 800 pounds. We want a seat that holds you know, an average weight so that we can keep the weight down in your boat. We do from time to time though, like we'll get a very large paddler. We've had 400 pound people yep. ask us to build a really strong boat and we'll engineer stronger parts for it. So if you're in that category, just let us know. Yep. So let's show the folks something really cool here. So our handles, our thwarts, our kneeling thwarts, our yokes with our carbon tech package are made with a super cool technology. These are aluminum molds and the part is actually made right in them. So do you wanna just talk about the development? You've done so much in terms of how it's made, which we're not gonna specifically tell people, but yep. this is another thing that you guys should be super proud of because I'm so psyched with this. Yeah, we, uh, we are super proud of this part. Um, when we decided we were gonna get into making our yokes and our handles and thwarts and stuff like that, uh, us being swift, we decided to go for the hardest part first. So we got our yoke first, thinking that if we can figure the yoke out, we can figure anything out. So um, it, it actually took us quite a while and quite a few failures until we figured out a reliable process to make this part. But uh, we're, we're super happy we did. As far as we know, we're the only company that can make this product. Um, it's so cool how they come out of the mold and um, they, they just look amazing. They're super strong and they're actually hollow inside, which is uh, uh, amazing. A lot of people are still surprised that we can pull a part like this out of the mold looking like this. Now, this isn't just like two or three layers of, of parts. Like I've, I've seen videos on carbon monocue bike frames yep. made where there's 138 different pieces in it, which isn't, you're not that ex to that extent. Well, but this is pretty cool. Th this was really cool. We, uh, we, we tried many different laminates for this. Like I said, we wanted to make sure we didn't want this breaking on anybody, but if you make something too strong, it ends up being too heavy. So what's really cool about this is we actually do behind this layer of carbon fiber, we have some very strategically placed materials. Like we use a, a unidirectional carbon fiber, which means all the carbon fiber filaments are running in one direction, which gives us very specific strength. And then we also have patches in very specific areas of plus minus 45 biaxial carbon fiber, just to give us reinforcements where we need it and take away weight where we don't need it. Now you actually build these, this is so cool. You'll build half the yoke 
on one side of the mold, and then you build half the yoke on the other side, and then you actually fit them together carefully, and you've got, and we don't need to tell the folks, but a really cool way of overlapping the seam. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting process, and uh, I won't get into it too much, but know that it, uh, it requires some special tools, and we actually have an inspection camera that we can put inside the yoke so we can see what we're doing inside. So how many of these can we make a day? Uh, typically, we can make up to three carbon fiber yolks per day. Out of, out of one mold, or we have multiple we, molds? Yeah, we have multiple molds. Um, on a good day, depending on staffing, we could technically make up to six. We could turn these around twice a day if we wanted to, but uh, sometimes, uh, we like to say, sometimes uh, trying to hurry can just uh, end up forcing you to lose time. So we try to focus on quality here. Uh, so we just want to good yolks every day. It's a tough part to make. You need a special laminator to make these. It's, it's definitely one of our harder parts to make here. So Matt Steffler, Terry Petty, thank you, Terry, have created the really unique Swift Canoe Carbon Tech package. These parts are super cool. They're super strong. So check them out. And Matt, another big thumbs up. Swift Carbon Tech package. That's how it's made.